Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video. In today's episode we're going to be discussing making prints in the dark room. Depending on the format of film that you're shooting, that will determine the type and size of enlarger that you need to make your images bigger. This is my enlarger that I'm using at the moment. This is a Philips PCS 2000. Um, this is a colour enlarger, it has a colour head. Um, basically on the top here we have a light source and this is the box that controls everything that goes on inside. So you have a light box, this is the slot where the negative carrier goes, this is my 6x6 negative carrier, this is for 120 film, so the maximum size I can use in this enlarger is 6x6. I also have a 35mm set for this, so I can do 35mm, also 645, because as you can see this thing has masks, so you can shoot or in large, sorry, different sizes. So your negative goes into there, emulsion side down, and slot that into the enlarger. This is right at the bottom so you can see it, but this basically moves up out of the way. You have a means of uh, focusing on the side here. There's another button so you can see that the bellows are going up and down for focusing. This is called the baseboard. And this little filter here is only for black and white, it's a red filter, so you can swing it underneath the lens. This is where the lens goes, lenses are interchangeable. The 35mm you want to use near enough the same as a, well, you use the same as a standard lens. So for 35mm you use a 50mm lens, and for large format you use a 75 or an 80mm lens. I don't really recommend using a colour enlarger for black and white. Um, in the experiments that I've been doing with this enlarger, because I've not had it very long, um, it doesn't uh, produce enough contrast. You're probably better using a black and white enlarger and contrast filters rather than trying to use a colour head. But this enlarger we're going to be using it when we do some colour printing. So it's kind of important that we try it out and see how it works. Right, let's move this out of the way. So this just slides up on this rail. Obviously the height of it's going to determine how big you can make your enlargement. Some enlargers you can swivel to the side to make bigger prints or the head will go around the other way so you can project onto the floor to make larger prints. The largest print I make is 8x10 so this enlarger is fine for that. This is the control power. Uh, it controls your three primary colours. You've got cyan, magenta and yellow and you've also got a time function at the bottom. Various buttons whether you're doing positive or negatives, turning the machine on and also um, uh, focus light which just turns it on automatically for focusing, keeps it on all the time. On the standby it runs for the set time and the mains adapter over here. The bigger the format, the bigger the enlarger. If you happen to be shooting on 5x4 or 8x10, the enlargers are going to be huge. Um, I'd recommend probably for the home. I'm doing this in my kitchen, as you can probably tell. Um, I think 6x6 is big enough. I don't really see an advantage to 6x7. Um, I quite like shooting 6x9, but then I contact print 6x9. If you're going to contact print, you don't need an enlarger. You just really need a light source. Always handy to have the instructions for your enlarger. So, you're obviously going to need some uh, some photo paper. This is 5x7, this is just cheap messy paper that I use for playing around with. Don't need a lot of equipment. Thermometer, because this is again like film developing, is temperature sensitive. We've got a set of three developing trays. They're not that expensive, they're about £3 each. Don't have to use plastic developing trays. Anything that's slightly larger than the piece of paper that you plan on developing because you want the fluid um, to travel freely over the surface. Just like film development, we agitate. Some measuring cylinders, I've got a big one and a little one. For measuring out your chemicals. Uh, a safe light, pick these up quite reasonably on eBay, it's not a bit dusty. Um, but yeah, safe light for black and white, can't use a safe light for colour. Funnel for putting your chemicals away because you can reuse them. 
squeegee for wiping down the prints after you've washed them. A couple of measuring jugs. Most useful thing of all. A set of tongs. This is used for handling your prints when they're in the, uh, the developing trays. And these are quite nice because they sit on the side. These trays are quite good because they've got thermometer holders on the side. I wouldn't bother with having three, three. you could have one in each tray, but I wouldn't bother with that, just one's enough. Black and white, to be honest, is a room temperature process. Here in the UK, most rooms are near enough 20 degrees. Unless we're lucky enough for it to be really warm, which is highly unlikely because it's raining today, and it's 16 degrees centigrade, it's miserable. Right, you need some paper developer, different from film developer, so I'm using at the moment Ilford Multigrade, other types of developer are available. Um, I'm just using this because it obviously goes with the paper. This is a variable contrast, so resin coated variable contrast paper. It works fine, it's resin so it washes fairly quick. Fibre based papers that you can get are more expensive but they're, they're higher quality. Um, but they need a lot more washing because obviously these are coated in resin so the chemicals don't actually get into the paper, they're protected. Whereas with a fibre paper it goes all the way through the paper so there's more washing and everything involved. Fixer, this is the same as film fixer, dilution slightly different. And I have a couple that I've already made up earlier. I've got some paper developer which I just store in these old milk crates because I keep using it every day. And this is paper fix, I do believe. Yep, paper fixer. You've got those already made up. That's all you basically need, really. Um, smartphone's useful for as a, as a timer, but I use one of these little um, process timers. It's got three different uh, timers built in. It's important if you want to build consistency that your timings and your temperatures and your materials stay very much the same. Don't chop and change. Choose one brand of paper, choose one type of developer and fixer until you've kind of mastered the art and are happy with results, then you can begin experimenting. And this is a handy little thing. This is a test strip printer. You can make a test strip by using a piece of cardboard over a piece of paper, but this is just a, a posh way of doing it, I suppose. You can put your paper in there and then you can expose in increments to work out what your exposure should be. So these are optional, nice to have, but you don't really need them. So you can use your, uh, your smartphone as a timer, but I don't like having the smartphone near chemicals, to be honest. I fear dropping it in there one day. And basically that's all you need to start uh, making black and white prints from your black and white negatives. So yeah, enlargers are fairly cheap. Um, most people are sort of giving them away or they don't make an awful lot of money on eBay. The biggest pain with them is you've got to go and collect them. Um, I've got a black and white press enlarger, which is in a suitcase. Uh, I went on eBay for 99p, but it cost me 20 quid in diesel to go and get the thing. So um, just be careful. A lot of them are collection only because of the size and the weight. Um, I leave mine permanently set up. In the kitchen, as I say, most days I'm messing about, most nights I'm messing about in the dark room. Um, so there you have it. Any questions, comments, leave them in the, the section below, and I hope to see you in the next one.